Hey traders, welcome back to CyberTrade University. If you are new here, I am Fausto and I've been helping traders like you navigating the market for over 30 years. Now today, I want to dive into a critical aspect of technical analysis that can significantly boost your trading performance. Identifying supply and demand is the key zone on candlestick charts. Understanding these zones is a key to timing your market entries and exits. So let's make mastery decisions and skills by optimizing your profits and loss ratio and making more informative trading decisions. Now, whether you're a complete beginner or looking to refine your strategies, this video is going to be packed with valuable trading insight to help you succeed. So grab a notepad and let's get started. Now, before we get started, let me just explain to you what an actual candlestick is. So here on this little screen right here, you can see that we have a bunch of little candles and red ones and green ones. And I want to kind of start off with this green one right here. So what you have to understand is that there's a wick and there's the candle. This right here is called the wick. If you ever think of a candle, you know, where you light, that's why they call it the wick. And then obviously you have the base where the wax is, and that's the actual candle itself. That's where we get a candle stick, okay? Now, the way it works and how stocks go up and down is due to supply and demand. And we'll kind of cover supply and demand as we move forward with this video. But what I want to kind of point out here is why is every candle look different? Why is every wick look different? What is the wick actually telling us? Well, what we have right here is um, we have the high and we have the low. Basically, what that means is that Within, we're looking at what's called a minute chart. Each candle that you see here is a one minute and what happened in that minute. So, and you could be a, we could do this on a weekly chart, we could do it on a monthly chart, but right now we're just looking at a minute chart. And basically it's saying what and how, what transpired within that minute. So what you could see right here, that was the high of the minute this was the low of the minute. This right here was the start of the minute. And right here would be the end of the minute. Now, if you notice, when we end over here, you'll see it starts a new candlestick. And then we end it here, it went to that new candlestick. Um, when we started here, where it ended, this is where it starts. Where it ended, where, this is where it starts. So that's how you're getting that little bit of what we call a ladder effect. So when you're trying to figure out, well, why is it going up and why is it going down? Why wick is one bigger than the other? Well, as of right now, all we need to know and what we care about is the high, the low, the open, and the close. Let's do that again. The high, the low the open, and the close. Those are the three things that come out of a candlestick. Now, there are several types of ways of looking at a candlestick and looking at a chart. Now you understand how the candlestick looks. Now the whole idea is to follow the trend of it, which is what we all do. But the problem is that what you're gonna learn going into this video is that most people are using the candle to focus on the past. I am gonna teach you how to read the future. The future is where we're gonna give us and what we're gonna see more what's called consolidation. Consolidation is where causes the biggest problems when it comes to trading that people get caught up in. So trend trading is very easy to see and we're gonna see that. But when we start talking about consolidation and then we start implementing other things that you can come along with it, which is means the time and sales window, which makes these things move, then things are gonna make a little bit more sense. Now, let me go out and show you exactly how we do that. Now, another thing that I forgot to mention, which I wanna show you before we move forward, is the colors. Now, you'll notice, like we said, you got the reds and you have the greens, because a lot of it has to do with the trend, and we're gonna learn that when we start talking about consolidation. Now, the reason why you'll get a red candle means that it uh, went from when it started and where it closed, it closed lower than where it opened. And that's why you will get a red candle. When you get a green candle, that would basically tell you it started here and it closed higher and that will make it green. So here's your red. You have the low of a red 
And that's where it started, and that's where it finished. So the whole idea of looking at this chart right here, you could see how the candles obviously get bigger, and then they obviously get smaller. Now, how, why that, that is is because the bigger the wick, the harder they fall or the, harder, or the faster they go up. And by looking at here, you could see how we get a lot of reds, and then we get a green, and then we get reds, and then we get green. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that in this video, but – what I'm trying to just showing you right here is just more or less understanding why we're getting more reds than greens. Red, more reds you get, obviously the trend is going down. The more greens we get, that means the trends are going up. That is trend trading. Now, the difference is, is that trending is fine, but we don't want to get caught in what we call the trap. The trap is consolidation, high frequency trades, and all that stuff. So, let me show you a little bit more about now we understand the trend. Now let's see how the patterns we could use on the zones. Now the key to a candlestick everybody wants to know is actually how does it know the colors and why does it turn red? What a lot of people neglect when it comes to trading is they don't use this window right here on the right. And this is called time and sales. So basically a candlestick gets its data from time and sales. So you could actually be able to be on top of the stock better, faster, and seeing the direction of the stock just using by time and sales. So the way it works is, and the way the volume works is that here you have where it says price, shares, and time. So the way you understand how a candle gets formed within that minute is that is the actual price it's trading at, and as the transactions are taking place, you could see that this stock could trade multiple, multiple uh, trades within that minute or hour or day. And the more volume it trades, the more it trades at that price, the bigger the candlestick you're going to get and the bigger wick you're going to get. So when you start seeing these colors – and how they go up and go down and want to know where these colors come from. You could just see, just even here in the past two minutes, why we're getting two green uh, candles is because look how many transactions take place. And you could see it as it's actually happening. This is going to come first before it goes there. So some of the big mistakes that people make when it comes to reading a candlestick is that sometimes you could just follow the time in sales, which is called tape reading. And following that will help you understand this. So following the trend, the problem with the, char uh, with the chart and the problem with it, a candlestick is that they're delayed. And it, it's going to take a minute for this to kick in until all this kicks in. And that is one of the disadvantages that people put themselves in by not using time and sales. So before you could actually go out there and use the candlestick towards your advantage, understanding the support and resistance levels on it and follow the wick and understand if it's, it's bigger or smaller, or if it's doji, whatever it is, you should really focus on time and sales too. Because time and sales, as being a market maker, we were focused on something called um, tape reading. And being a tape reader lets you understand exactly where the trend of the stock is going and then the, and then the chart comes later because you, you'd be surprised – Sometimes as a tape reader, we could just read the tape and have a, a better understanding before anyone else gets into the stock because we'll see those transactions take place. So regarding about the candle, candle is great, understanding the trend, but if you're not using the time and sales side by side with it, you're kind of going to be a lagger and laggers don't really make it in trading. You always have to be a leader and the leaders to see the future orders of what's happening at that moment and see if those transactions take place. Because when you do a trade, and when you look at what's called level two and level three, and if you watch my other videos, um, make sure you subscribe to the channel and you'll see those videos. But when I talk about level three and level four, and we see these what we call these iceberg orders, these big block orders, and you wanna see if those transactions are taking place, well, those charts are not gonna come to fruition unless those orders get executed, which we're gonna talk a little bit more into this video. 
Now, as you are looking for stocks to trade, you'll notice in some of the other videos that we do, how we show you actually how to find stocks to trade, which are what we'll call tradable and non-tradable. There are things that will also help you with that by just looking at a chart. For example, we're looking at a stock right here, um, and these are things that I want to talk about to stay away from and things that you should be looking for that have you know good volatility, good action. And if you notice this stock right here, this is something that we call is, is an ugly stock that is what we call non-tradable. And why that is, is that you'll notice that the candlesticks are very spotty. They're all over the place. And by seeing that they're all over the place, that means that the stock is not really trading that much volume. Now, the big mistake that people make is they, they get into stocks that are not tradable, and we have what's called the three T's. If you watch the other previous videos that we've done, you'll know exactly what those the T2 and T3 are. But the first T is what we call tradable. And if your stock is not tradable, meaning it has a good spread, good volatility, you know, good trend, then you don't want to trade it because you'll end up getting stuck with the position and it won't go anywhere. And next thing you know, you turn turn around and then you'll you, you next thing you know, you'll lose money in the stock and you don't want to do that. So and it's gonna happen. You'll make those mistakes, but you gotta learn from them. But when you see a stock like this and you're getting all these little spots over here, that means that by the time the stock is trading, you know then it's going to record it on the chart. So this stock is obviously is not trading very, very actively. And whenever it does, it will come up and it will print it as, you know, if it's a trending down, trending up, whatever it is. But when you get something like a stock like, um, I don't know, any brand name stock we could look at, we could look at UX, uh, UVXY, where it traded over 13 million shares, at least you could see how nice and bunched the chart looks. When they're very bunched like that, that means that the stock's got good volatility, which you could see here, trade over 13 million shares over the day so far, where the other one trade about a million shares. So try to stay away from stocks that are not trading any volume. They don't trade any volume, you don't wanna trade it because that also would tend to, to, to show you that the stock's got big, a big spread and there's not too many people trading it, and that's how you get caught, holding the bag. And you don't want to get caught holding the bag and being something that it has no volatility in it. So as you see, stocks have these candlesticks where the reds means the stock is trending down and the greens means the stock is trending up. Now we have to understand, well, what exactly does that mean and how, does it, how do we use it towards our advantage? Well, most people that go out there and look at these candles, they're always looking at the, the colors and thinking, you know, oh, the, the, the red is down, so the stock is trending down. But you have to understand something that what drives a stock down is what, what people are doing opposite of, is that it's selling. And the only way you're going to know if a stock is trending that way is knowing if those sellers are out there selling the stock lower. Now, I don't want to get too advanced into this video, which we have more advanced videos out there, we'll show you that. But when you look at it, the goal is to use the candlestick to find where the top of the candle and where the bottom of the candle, um, and to see where eventually it's going to consolidate and start trending um, the other direction. Now, as we're looking at these candles, you'll see that we'll have what's called supports and resistance levels. And with these supports and resistance, that is where the buyers and sellers are coming in. So you got to remember, there, there are two people that you're competing against. You have order flow, which is tr pushing the stock a specific direction, but eventually that direction is going to stop because two things could happen. They ran out of shares to sell or somebody's buying it up and won't let it go any lower. So as much as you're following what the candle is doing and seeing what the color is doing, you got to know what the trend is doing. And that's where everybody's lags when it comes to looking at a candlestick because some people are counting candles. They're saying, oh, it's got five green candles and those seven soldiers, or we got 15 reds versus two greens. You don't need to sit there and count because the more you count and the more you try to figure that out, the later you're going to be to the game and the next thing you know, the stock is going to pick its direction and you're going to miss out. What you need to focus on is who's buying it 
and who's selling it. And if those buyers are out there and the sellers are out there. So as much as you got the colors and you could see the trend, which by the way, like I mentioned you know, a little bit earlier, you could just see that on time and sales. Now we have to have the game plan of the support and resistance levels. And if the stock is going to consolidate there or if it's going to cancel out and break those support levels and go down to new support levels. So don't get caught up too much on the colors and the size and the wick size and the pattern and the hammer and all those little things that people kind of talk about. Because the more you think about it, the more you're going to be late to the game. You have to understand something. What makes a chart work is buyers and sellers out there. And that's why it's important that when you watch my other previous videos, how I focus so much on level three and level four, which is what the orders all play. But the candlesticks... They do kind of help understanding the pattern, the color, but you could just get that just by time and sales, you know, but when you start to implement the three soldiers and a five, so everyone has all these things that they kind of use. I wouldn't get caught up on that too much because the more you think, the more you're going to be late to the game and you're going to be caught in holding the bag. So as you see the stock, a Tesla trending, you know, obviously going down and you can see how the stock hits support levels right around here, around 214. Um, that is really what you're really concerned about. Why did it bounce at 214, 215? Why not 210? Why not 216? You could see a lot of reds, and then you could see the greens. And obviously, we know it's green because it's going up. We know it's red. It's going down. But that's not why I'm really concerned about the chart. I'm more concerned about what, who's pushing it down and why is it bouncing here and why is it going down at 222? So that is the big game. The game is to read the future. And the future is seeing who's making those buyers and sellers go up. Because if you know where those buyers and sellers are and you can read that future, you will make smarter and better trading decisions. Not by trying to understanding certain patterns of what the wicks and the hammers and all that jo dojis are doing. Because those do help. But, what, but by the time you figure it out, it's usually too late. So let me show you how we follow the big block orders on a different way, which is called level three and level four. Now, if you look over here, this is what we call level four. Now in level four, we have all these big lines here. Now you'll notice these dots stand for like a candlestick, but, um, but on this platform, they do a little bit differently. It looks like a candle, but it doesn't give you all the nonsense of the opens and closes and everything else. But what it does do, it kind of makes bigger balls and smaller ones. And the bigger the ball, that means the more volume of trade. It means the more kind of calculates how many transactions were taken. So if there was a lot of transactions going off that price and the in like you're looking at right here, a big red ball then that stock obviously means it's going lower. If you get a big green ball, that means a lot of buying. That means the stock's going up. But what you have to focus on is the future. So as much as you see the trends, you'll notice these lines right here. These lines are orders that are out there. And by seeing those orders, we'll know if they're getting executed or not. And remember, there are always buyers and sellers out there in a stock. So you could see that if an order is out there, and he, like the, this order right here was out there at 220. And when it came down close to him, you'll see the big green ball. What does that mean? That order got executed. So what does that tell you? That tells you that there was a buyer, there was a demand. And in theory, where there's a demand, the stock should go up. But in this situation, somebody sold to that big buyer and that's not a good sign. That's actually a bad sign. A candlestick can't tell you that. OK, a candle is only going to tell you exactly, you know, what happened in the past. But now you're seeing the offer orders in the future. And this is where everyone makes mistakes. And this is where you'll probably notice that a lot of people don't talk about this is because they weren't a market maker like I was. See, I live here in Wall Street. I was doing this for over 30 years. Um, I was one of the original day traders that started. And the big thing we always looked at is these orders and to see if those orders get filled because that gives us that game plan. Now, when you look at here, we're looking at basically Tesla and you'll notice that there are orders everywhere. But what you need to focus on is if we go here to the right, you'll notice right around here, this called what's called a current order book. 
And then you'll see orders like 127, 29,000. Um, you can see down here 200, uh, 250,000. And if you notice here on this day specifically, Tesla did have a lot of orders that were looking to buy the stock right around 215. And every time the stock hit 215, the stock obviously went up. So there was a lot of buying there. And you could see that there was over 130,000 shares being bought there. Um, and you see how it hit this, this trader. And then all of a sudden he came back and it ran the stock up. Now, a, a candlestick can't tell you that, okay? Only level three, which you can get on NASDAQ, or you can get it through level four, through where we could tell you where to get that. Once again, just look at one of my other videos and we'll show you how to do it. So if you want to be a very good candlestick reader, sometimes you don't you want to add all those bells and whistles and kind of take a step back and more or less follow the orders. It's good to see the colors and see where the transactions are taking place. But like I told you, you're not an analyst. Don't pretend to be one. You should know what exactly you're looking at. So when you listen to other people when they talk about it, you understand what they mean. But at the end of the day, what's going to help you become more profitable? Seeing the orders that are out there in the future or trying to figure out what the size of the wick is and how long that wick's been there and how many colors are there and, and how many orders are there. And by that time, like I said earlier, it's usually too late and then you miss the trade. Let's quickly recap the key points. Identifying demand levels where the price tends to bounce upward, identifying supply where price tends to drop, and most importantly, using level four to track the big block iceberg orders for better market insight. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up and share it with your fellow traders. And don't forget, subscribe to CyberTrade University and hit the bell icon so you never miss an update. We're always uploading new content to help you stay ahead of the trading game. Also, join our trading community. You'll love it on social media. We have lots of exciting discussions, tips, short videos, live trading sessions. You can even interact with other traders at CyberTrain University, including our instructors. And if you want to dive in deeper, check out our website at CyberTrainUniversity.com where you can get more ideas of courses, podcasts, webinars, and resources that could tailor you to customize your trading journey. Now, thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in my upcoming videos. Happy trading.